So the beetle that we just got, it basically serves as this game's version of the boomerang, in a sense. That's a very rough sense. But uh, it has actually a lot of additional features, and it's probably one of my favorite items within Skyward Sword. Uh, you basically can send it out and you can track it as I just did and uh, you can hit distant switches cut down uh, strings and uh, you know defeat enemies hit weak spots there's so much you can do with it and uh, later on in the game we'll even get some upgrades for the beetle uh, and it has different uh, different abilities in it it's pretty sweet it's one of the better things I would say in this game in terms of the items one of if not the best item if you look around the room there's so much you can do with the beetle right away there's these sort of like openings at the top portion of the room that have these little holes where you can send the beetle through and a lot of them have rupees a lot of them have uh, well at least this one right here has a switch behind uh, there's also some deku baba that are protecting the switch found here and uh, these deku baba actually you can cut off their stems with a well-timed, uh, or a well, I guess, aimed beetle attack. I think this is absolutely sweet because it's another method of defeating the same enemy. So not only can we slash at them in a certain way with your sword, you can use the slingshot to stun them, you can use the shield bash to stun them, but now you can use the beetle to cut their stem. I think it's just really sweet that there's so many different ways you can defeat a single enemy and uh, it makes it so that my playthrough of the game and your playthrough of the game will not be identical because we can always use different strategies. Anyway, there's a number of these other little corridors at the top of this level and uh, you want to just send the beetle through pretty much all of them just because there's so many goodies to get and uh, there's so many rupees to get as well. Uh, in this particular corridor here, we got an amber relic, which, as I said earlier, this is not very, it's not really worth much since they're so common. But uh, these boxes in particular are very valuable because a lot of them contain some uh, some good rupees. And it's, pr it's pretty much luck of the draw, as uh, I believe my previous playthrough, that same box dropped like three red rupees, and this time it just dropped blue and green ones. So uh, sometimes you'll get better rupees than uh, than other times. I think it's a little random. I'm not sure if there's any sort of formula to it of sorts. Uh, this little passageway is a little more difficult. It's probably easier if you go from the right side, but uh, there's these mushrooms that are in the way. And uh, I should mention that these mushrooms, you can attack them at any point and get mushroom spores from them using your bottle. Mushroom spores though they really don't have much use at all. In fact uh, I only know of one use of mushroom spores in the entire game actually. I know there's the glittering spores which I sort of talked about in the previous chapter but uh, so it's not really worth getting that. Uh, there's a couple more of these boxes and there's a couple more of these corridors and uh, I'm up to over 180 rupees and I believe I'm gonna get another red rupee I want to say in this corridor and uh, that's gonna put me near 200 rupees uh, 200 rupees this is pretty much if you want to sort of keep pace with the amount of rupees I have and uh, that shouldn't be a problem as long as you're you know getting all the rupees now and you're not just randomly wasting it just because, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the economics of this game are it's a little more realistic. You don't get infinite number of rupees quite easily like you did in some of the more recent 3D console Zelda games. Um, it's pretty good, actually. I think that's uh, that's been a, a problem where in 
in more recent Zelda games, Spear Tracks didn't really have this problem, but it only, you almost felt like, you know, what's the point of these rupees? The rupees didn't really seem to have value because there was just so many of them. Anyway, uh, I previously unlocked this door by sending the beetle through one of those narrow corridors, and uh, this time you want to head through the door. Uh, if you, again, if you saw the E3 2011 demo, if you saw any gameplay whatsoever, uh, I think half of the Zelda community knew how to solve this puzzle the second they entered this room. Uh, unlike the previous rooms where there was only one or two eye switches, this room has three of them, and you can't get the third one, the top one, to follow your sword because you're too low to the ground. So what you have to do is climb on up here, and you can use the beetle to cut down this box. What's different about this box than some of the boxes in the earlier portion of the Skyview Temple is this box is a steel box, so it won't just break once it hits the ground. Uh, what you want to do is move it in front of the three eyes that were uh, in front of that large steel gate, and once you step on top of the steel box, you'll be able to gain the attention of all three of the eyes. So it's a pretty sweet puzzle. It makes you think a little outside the box in a way. Fortunately, I sort of knew the answer right away, but uh, I don't think this one will give people too much trouble. Uh, in general, I think the puzzles in the Skyview Temple aren't too difficult. There's not much that it... Some of the, some of the stuff gets you thinking, but uh, I didn't think there was anything overly difficult where people got stuck for extended periods of time. Uh, perhaps I'm wrong, I don't know. Uh, there was a few things like that first small key at the beginning of the dungeon that uh, sort of got, I had uh, trouble the first time through where uh, raising and lowering, or not lowering, but raising the water, I couldn't find the diamond switches and such. Anyway, hitting back through this room, you can't just go through the bottom because we had dropped down so you can't really reach that area. So what you need to do is send out the beetle, and all the way in the distance you will find a diamond switch. So send out the beetle, hit the diamond switch, and this will cause some water to flow through this through this area. Once again, this was one of the puzzles that I already knew before even playing this game because of all the E3 coverage we had at the site. But um, climb on up, and there's a spider web that blocks your way. You don't really have to defeat this Skulltula. You can just, you know, cut the web and then run by. Or you can flip over the Skulltula and defeat it. Something that's a little bit rewarding about just doing that thrust onto the Skulltula's belly, like the weak spot. I don't know. I just love the downward stab. I guess it's shades of uh, Adventure of Link. Uh, I always loved the downward thrust in that game. It's one of my all-time favorite Zelda just uh, abilities, one of Link's abilities. So it's nice that it's it's still in Zelda games today. While it's much different than the downward thrust from Adventure of Link, it's, it's still in the game. Anyway, here's one thing I forgot to get a little earlier, but you can just pick it up now. You can send the beetle all the way to the top of this large central structure, and there is a diamond switch here. This will open up the gate, allowing you to pick up another piece of heart. And if you've been following along with the walkthrough, this is our fourth piece of heart, which should increase your overall life to seven full heart containers. Uh, this is important, because you can get four of them before the first dungeon, uh, or before the first dungeon boss. It gives us that one extra piece of health for the dungeon boss. Uh, I find it very useful since the dungeon boss is actually kind of hard. It's probably one of the most difficult first bosses in all of Zelda. So uh, it's pretty good, especially if you're playing the hero's quest, he might give you some trouble. Um, but it's a good idea to get all four of those heart pieces. In this room here, we're going to run into a new enemy known as a Staldra. These enemies there, I initially thought this was a Gliok, because it's sort of like a three-headed dragon of sorts. But uh, what you need to do is just chop off all three of its heads at the same time. I believe there's other ways to defeating it, but uh, the you can just stun it. And uh, after you, like if you cut off only one or two of its heads, once the other heads rejuvenate, they will be in a direct horizontal line. So uh, 
you can easily just do a horizontal slash to defeat him. Continue through this corridor and there's a Skulltula blocking your way. Just cut it down and it will fall into the abyss somewhere down below. Uh, and you can just run across and jump over the little gap. If you turn to the left there is a diamond switch right here. You can use your slingshot or beetle to open it up. And uh, this just gives you access to an earlier portion of the dungeon. It's not incredibly useful right now, but, uh, well, here's a little hint, or a little spoiler alert. Uh, we are going to be revisiting the Skyview Temple at a later portion in the game, and uh, it's a good idea to activate all of these little shortcuts, or the two shortcuts in this game, just because it makes for easier navigation in the future, so you don't have to backtrack through rooms again. So that Bokoblin, the green Bokoblin, called over another Bokoblin behind you, and they sort of try to trap you in the other rope, but uh, you can just use your jostle and knock him down. And I like hitting that other Bokoblin with a slingshot, just <laughs> them falling over, and they're like, when they like fall over. I don't know why that sounded like a cat, but <laughs> I like the Bokoblins in this game. They're kind of strange looking. They're almost like a throwback to the Moblins from like the original Legend of Zelda, at least in terms of the artwork sense. Anyway, you want to cut down the rope and you gotta play a little Indiana Jones here, jumping over to the rope. Uh, it's important to time it. It's no problem if you fall. One thing about Skyward Sword that I think is different from every single Zelda game before it. If you jump and you miss a jump and fall down into the abyss, into a hole, he'll just appear right where you just jumped from, but you won't take any damage. So falling is no longer a hazard. Uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe that was one of the more tedious things in Zelda before, and they decided to remedy that. I don't know, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it before, but hey, I guess it's a little more friendly towards the more, uh, how to put it, the more adventurous people who are, are quick to just run and gun and they don't take their time. Uh, so they don't get punished as much in a way. Like, just like that. <laughs> I released a little too early, I didn't get long enough of a swing, but uh, I completely forgot that I <laughs> fell there, because uh, I recorded this, I'm doing the audio commentary afterwards. So. so here I am making fun of people while I'm doing the same thing that I'm making fun of. Oh, Moss, you're funny. Anyway, jump on over and you'll see the big treasure chest straight ahead. So you can just swing on over. And, uh, you know, you have to use your Wiimote to like, go back and forth. It's, it's kind of fun, actually. I like it. Open the big chest and you'll get the boss key. Or wrong. You'll get the golden carving. I guess for some reason they felt that just using boss keys and boss door locks were... Uh, not good, so they have these random treasures instead. This case, it's the gold carving, and as you'll see in a second, we are going to be inserting it into the locked door. I don't really know what the purpose of this is. It's sort of just like an add-on to use the Wii Motion Plus to rotate things around. It's all right. I mean, it's nothing special. But uh, anyway, before using the key, you want to run on over to the statue here and save your progress, just because in case you die. And you might very well die if this is your first time through. Uh, you only have to start right outside here. Just turn the key so it fits in perfectly. This one's rather simple, but they do get elaborate pr later on. And then insert it in. Link will automatically open the door and head through. And uh, join me next video, and we will take on the dungeon boss.